When we look closely at musculoskeletal injuries that threaten the health and safety of adolescent athletes, we have many reasons to be concerned. Injuries to the lower extremities or legs, like ACL injuries, ankle sprains, and hamstring injuries, account for almost a quarter of all sports and recreation-related injuries. Musculoskeletal injuries can be physically, mentally, and financially devastating for children and their families. Sometimes, surgery is recommended and a return to activity can take up to a year or more for certain injuries. Even more concerning is the fact that many of these injuries can result in osteoarthritis. And most people who develop osteoarthritis will ultimately require joint replacement surgery. But there's good news. Many musculoskeletal injuries can be prevented. The first step in preventing these injuries is becoming familiar with the risk and protective factors for this type of injury. Risk factors are things that increase a person's chance of suffering an injury and should be avoided as much as possible. Let's take a closer look at the risk factors for adolescent musculoskeletal injury. The first category includes several things that we cannot change about a person, such as their sex, their injury history, and their anatomy, such as the size and shape of their bones or ligaments. These are often referred to as non-modifiable risk factors because there is essentially nothing that we can do to change them. The other category of risk factors are called modifiable risk factors. These are things that can be changed. These modifiable risk factors include things like low levels of fitness, including strength and flexibility, high workloads, which may result in inadequate rest and recovery, and poor movement quality, or the way an individual moves. While it's good to know a bit about the non-modifiable risk factors, it's more important to focus on the injury risk factors that are modifiable. Remember, these are the things about a person that can be changed. The way that children move when they jump and land or change speed and direction when they are running is the modifiable injury risk factor that physical educators have the greatest opportunity to influence. The joints of the upper and lower body should be aligned and stabilized throughout any sport or physical activity. But children aren't typically taught how to perform these movements with proper technique. To determine just how much movement quality is an issue among children, my team completed a research study where we observed how a group of nearly 500 children performed several common exercises. Unfortunately, we found that only 21% of children between 8 and 11 years old, 29% of children between the ages of 12 and 15, and 21% of 16 and 17 year old children were able to perform common exercises like squats, planks, and jumps with proper technique. The inability to perform these types of activities with proper technique is an injury risk factor that can be changed with proper education and training. One of the most common movement quality issues we see in children is something called dynamic knee valgus. Dynamic knee valgus is the scientific term used to describe the movement when the knee joints collapse inward toward each other during activities like jumping and landing or changing direction when running. The photo on the right side of the screen demonstrates dynamic knee valgus perfectly. When someone's knees move into this knock knee position, forces on the sensitive structures like ligaments and cartilage increase significantly. While some athletes are forced into this position by physical contact, many athletes suffer non-contact injuries, demonstrated in this example. Movement is an important aspect of everyday life. 
Proper movement patterns should be taught early in childhood to provide the knowledge and skills that children need to participate in physical activity with minimal risk of injury. Unfortunately, improper movement patterns dramatically increase the risk of injury and limit athletic potential among adolescents. Alternatively, protective factors help to decrease the risk of injury and should be utilized as much as possible. Many sports medicine researchers have demonstrated the significant protective effects of neuromuscular training for adolescent athletes in clinical trials. Over the past 10 years, studies have shown that many injuries can be prevented if athletes perform neuromuscular training programs regularly.